I thought aviation was incredibly exciting and I liked uh, model rockets. I used to fly uh, model rockets when I was in elementary school and just making stuff go fast and high it was it, really exciting and of course if you'd asked me if I want to be an astronaut I would have said you know absolutely but but it wasn't something that I carried as a goal since childhood. Um, and then uh, in college I became an engineer and learned how stuff works and how to build things and I got a job in an aerospace company and we were building satellites and satellite parts and uh, I got to meet a few astronauts and uh, while when I met them I realized that hey it's a job and I never even thought of being an astronaut as a job and then I heard that they were taking applications for that job so uh, I thought well geez who doesn't who doesn't want to be an astronaut I mean everybody wants to be an astronaut in my mind so got the application filled it in mailed it off and uh, Almost forgot about it. I just felt like I bought the lottery ticket stuck in my pocket and forgot about it. And I was really surprised when they gave me a call and asked me if I wanted to interview. And, uh, and equally surprised when I got selected for the class of 96. Oh, it's fun. I mean, it's, uh, it's sort of back to school. Uh, we, for the first two years, we're called astronaut candidates or ASCANs for short. And ASCAN training is learning everything you can about NASA. So we go to all the centers and we try to we learn about what they do. Uh, it's all about learning how the space station works. Uh, when I joined, it was all about learning how the space shuttle works. Uh, and then it's all the skills that you're going to need to be an astronaut. So some robotic skills and some spacewalking skills and some fix-it skills and some speaking skills. And so it's, a, it's sort of going to school for almost uh, two years and then when you come out of it you're an eligible astronaut for assignment and I guess it was four years after I joined that I got selected for my first mission. Uh, it felt pretty normal pretty quickly. Uh, when we go up on the space shuttle we don't dock for about uh, until the, the third day and so that means we have you know two full days of living in the space shuttle to kind of get used to weightlessness, to get used to brushing your teeth in weightlessness and putting on your socks, which is comically difficult to do in weightlessness. And so you've, you've sort of adapted that sort of uh, doing your everyday stuff in weightlessness. Now you get into the station and it's a real benefit. There's just a lot more room. The space station is outfitted with uh, lots of computers to provide you some entertainment and also communications with home. So you can talk to your family, um, virtually every day and so that feels a lot more normal and so living on the space station I thought was a very fast adaptation. It's the two great things about being in space from a personal point of view are floating and looking out the window. Looking out the window is a spectacular privilege. Uh, we're 200 and something miles above the surface of the earth. We're going 17,000 miles an hour. We cover most of the populated land mass because of our, the inclination of our orbit. Uh, to look down at the earth and see both very familiar sights like your hometown and unfamiliar sights like the middle of Australia, which is incredibly beautiful. That was a motivator every day uh, for space, in, in space for me. So even out the little window, it was uh, amazing. So now you put the helmet on, you put the spacesuit on, you get in the airlock, you close the door behind you, you open the door out into space, and now uh, your window has become a full 180 degree mask view. And um, the thing about spacewalks is we're not out there for the view, we're out there to do the work. And um, I would say, uh, every spacewalk will tell you, the view is great, we think. My memory of the spacewalks really is what's here, um, and I had to force myself to have moments where I could appreciate um, the setting and the view and, uh, and take some pictures and sort of remember it that way. It is spectacular. It's amazing to hold on to the space station. You're going 17 and a half thousand miles an hour um, and hold on and just sort of look down at your feet and 200 miles under your feet, there goes the coast of California and then, oops, nine minutes later, there goes New York City as you're flying over and then on your way to Europe. Well, the biggest surprise to me was that when you're in space with the weightlessness, uh, it is, I, I call weightlessness 75% enjoyable, 75% unbelievably fun, 25% just a pain in the neck. And the pain in the neck aspect is 
you're used to, on the ground, you're used to doing things without thinking. You're used to writing something down and putting the pen down. And the pen stays there and the paper stays there and you can turn around and when you turn back, the pen's there, the paper's there. Well, since everything floats in space, you have to think absolutely about everything you touch and everything that you want to touch. Uh, when you're eating in space, you have to, generally people will eat one thing at a time because to eat your meat and your potatoes and your drink, you have to hold down, tie down, find a, a fix each item between, if you're gonna pick up something new. Otherwise you're just juggling stuff and stuff will, it'll get out of control. And one of the pleasures of coming back to space, uh, to the ground, was not having to think about eating, not having to think about my utensils. I can put them down and it was magic. They just stayed right there.